Are you kidding me right now? Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I bought the Logitech MX Keys Mechanical Mini as soon as it launched and my plan was to test it out and see how it stacks up with a lot of other keyboards that I've been trying out lately, but that did not go according to plan. Uh, there were some unforeseen events that took place with it, so it did cause a bit of a delay in terms of me getting this video out. But I also learned some things along the way that I think are valuable, so you'll likely hear a few more negatives and a few more positives than you would have if this never happened. Uh, I do just want to start off with why I was excited about this keyboard. Uh, this is really one of the first real mainstream options for Mac that was a low profile mechanical keyboard specifically geared towards creatives and coders and really just productivity in general. Uh, there are some other low profile mechanical keyboard options out there like the Keychron K3 or the Nufi Air 75, but in large part, you're not gonna find those keyboards in big box stores like you are with Logitech products. You're more likely to find those other brands amongst enthusiasts where I think Logitech is aiming at more of a mainstream audience. And I do think Logitech adds their own flair to these keyboards as well. The thing that I really like about the MX Mechanical Mini is the sleek look. It's got a bit more of a modern design with an aluminum top plate and a plastic base and rounded corners. Uh, there's an LED status light in the upper right hand corner, just like on the regular MX keys. Uh, there isn't any flex in this keyboard at all, and overall it does feel like it has a really solid construction. Along the front you have your USB-C charge port and a power switch, and on the bottom you do have feet if you want to adjust the angle, but I do prefer it sitting flat. With it flat, the base is almost the same height as the regular MX keys as well. And adding the height of the keys, you're only about a quarter inch taller, which is something that I really love about low profile mechanical keyboards like this. They can sit flat at your desk and you don't have to worry about having a wrist rest in the same way that you do with a standard profile layout. So for me, it's just a lot less clutter and one less thing I have to worry about taking up space at my desk or dragging with me if I want to use this with another machine. One thing that I'm not a huge fan of. The only color that you can currently get these keyboards in is graphite. Uh, I would have liked to see at least a light option here as I do prefer lighter colors over dark. Uh, you also don't really have any options when it comes to keycaps just due to the nature of this being both a low profile keyboard as well as having these custom function keys. And I really wish that they would have included just a few extra keys in here specifically for using a Mac or a Windows keyboard, uh, which is not uncommon for most mechanical keyboards that support both platforms. Uh, right now they just have a dual label, which I've never really liked. Uh, the keycaps themselves are ABS plastic with a coating over the top and hopefully that does keep the shine off these long term after extended use. And under the keys you've got a white backlight that does have seven different brightness settings and six different effects. There is also a proximity sensor that's set up to turn off the backlight whenever your hands leave the keyboard after 30 seconds and turn back on when they're close again, which is mostly in the name of battery life. The light shines through the key legends and is consistent bright throughout and you can also control it through the function keys at the top uh, just to the left of those backlight keys you have your connection options for pairing up to three Bluetooth devices so super handy if you want to use this with multiple machines through Bluetooth and this also does come with the new bolt receiver that most new Logitech products have which increases the security and has a stronger signal over those old unifying receivers now, I've used both Bluetooth and the Bolt receiver and had no issues with either. Uh, the connection has always been strong and it's never dropped any key presses. Uh, the latency on these keyboards is pretty good overall. I think I've seen it listed for about 14 milliseconds with the receiver and around 15 with Bluetooth, so totally fine for productivity and casual gaming. But this is definitely geared towards more office use and creativity, as I mentioned. These do come in three different styles of key switches. You have a tactile version that uses brown switches, a linear version with red switches, and a clicky option with blues. Uh, the working model that I have here, that's foreshadowing for later. 
is the tactile version, which has brown switches, and the keys have a really small bump slightly into the key press. Uh, I've also tried the red or linear version out as well. Uh, those switches don't have that same bump, and I find they aren't quite as sensitive in terms of how far the key press has traveled before it's registered. But the key travel is definitely a lot smoother, and I think overall just requires less effort to press the keys down. Uh, depending on which version you get, they will sound a little bit different as well. Here is a little bit of audio just to give you an idea of what each one sounds like. I haven't had a chance to try out the blues, but I would expect them to have a little bit more audible click, uh, hence the name. Uh, I do generally like the feel of blues, but they're usually quite loud and super annoying to anyone who is around you. I've been using the tactile keyboard over the last couple of weeks, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I did find it a little bit of an adjustment coming from the MX keys, where the keys have a bit more space in between them. But after a few hours use, I was pretty used to everything. But the layout of everything is pretty much the same as the MX keys as well in terms of the function row. I wish they would have included media keys for forward and back. You can double tap the play button to hit the next track, but it's not really that obvious when you just plug this thing in and start using it. Uh, but other than that, no real complaints, uh, at least the second time around. You might have noticed that I said the working model when I was referencing this keyboard, and well, that's where things get kind of interesting. So I order the keyboard and it shows up at my door and I unbox it and I'm super excited to turn it on and start testing this thing out. I go to pair it up and the first thing that I notice is it won't pair. Uh, for those of you who don't know, when you pair up some keyboards through Bluetooth on a Mac, it'll ask you to enter a code and press enter and then it just pairs up. Uh, the first few times I try this, I enter a code, nothing happens. Uh, what I didn't realize at the time was that the first two codes it showed had the number nine in them. The third time I try, there's no nine in the code and it pairs. And from there, I'm trying to type something out and something is definitely off. Some keystrokes are missing, and at first I'm thinking about the connection, wondering if there's some kind of interference or what exactly is happening there. I've had some instances where Bluetooth devices won't work if they're sitting next to your phone or something, or if there's just too many devices paired. So I'm at my desk disconnecting things from Bluetooth, moving stuff around. Nothing is getting any better. And then I start noticing which keys that I'm having trouble with. And it ends up being this whole column of keys from the nine down to the period. I could get the O to work if I pressed it down and wiggled it, but that was it. I tried popping off the keycaps and spraying some air in there, but nothing helped. So as you can imagine, I was not very pleased at that point. Uh, these keyboards are not cheap and you do expect them to work out of the box, so it's really frustrating when you get a defective unit like this. From there, I did what most people do when they get frustrated by a product or a company. I took my rage to Twitter to complain about them in hopes that they felt shame and to make myself feel better. And that, my friends, was actually the silver lining that turned out to be a positive experience in this whole situation. Uh, Logitech actually followed up with me right away, uh, being really understanding of the whole situation and they sent me out a new keyboard within the next day or two. That got to me within three business days and I think overall it was pretty painless to get sorted out. At least for me it was. And that experience was just so much better than the interactions that I've had with companies like Keychron when I've had issues with their keyboards. It's not that Keychron has terrible service or anything, I don't mean to pick on them. Uh, your issues will likely eventually get solved but if you're based in North America like I am, dealing with their support team is a little bit tougher because everything is based in Asia, so it can be more of a long drawn out process. To have a super quick response from Logitech here and to have a new keyboard in my hands within a week or less is really impressive. And I think that's partly why I would consider paying a little bit more as long as the product is decent quality. This new MX Mechanical Mini that I've had, I've had zero issues with and it's been great. So I'm sure the last model was just defective and I am a lot more confident now that even if something were to ever happen, I'd be able to resolve it without too much friction. Besides support, another thing that Logitech does a little bit better than most other companies is building out a decent app experience. The Logitech Options Plus app works pretty well for what it is. 
So when you first set it up, it will guide you through some of the options and features for your keyboard. And in the main dashboard, you have a bunch of customizable options. You can change some of the actions for your F keys and the keys along the far right column. And you can also customize these for specific apps by setting up custom profiles. Uh, you can play with all your backlighting, toggle between devices, update your firmware, and change some other settings in there. Uh, there's also a battery life indicator in there as well, which is the final thing that I will touch on. The battery is supposed to last for up to 15 days with backlighting and 10 months without it, which actually beats the MX Keys charge time of 10 days with backlighting and 5 months without. Uh, and even if it was the same as the MX Keys, I'd have been totally fine with that. So I'd expect this to be awesome in that regard. Obviously I can't sit here and test this for 10 months. I'm just basing this on context from my MX Keys Mini, but I don't think anyone will be disappointed there. Overall, this has kind of been a roller coaster when it comes to my thoughts on this keyboard. I started off super excited, then I got a defective unit and I was not happy, but Logitech did offer great support and I got a replacement unit right away. And I've really liked typing on this keyboard over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it is pretty expensive, starting at $149 for the mini and $169 for the full-size keyboard. But I do think that it does have great build quality, a good battery life, and it does provide a really nice typing experience. Uh, I do also think that there's something to be said for the level of support that I received, so I do just want to call that out. And if you do take anything away from this, it's that when things go wrong, you should go publicly complain on social media. I will leave links to this keyboard and some of my other favorite favorites in the description. If you have any questions or comments, drop those down below. And I also do want to hear if you have any interesting stories about good or bad product support. If you enjoyed this video, clack that like button. If you would like to see more tech related content, or if you think that we may have made eye contact while passing each other in a local park amongst nature, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next upload.